the first part that we uh, try to look at is that how can we make it as frictionless as possible by doing integrations into existing systems or giving them something that they are already familiar with, right? So that there is no significant learning curve here. The other big advantage with uh, with uh, generative AI and and with the coming of Chat GPT is that things have become conversational, right? So which is always an easy thing because that dramatically cuts down the learning curve, right? So if you can give an interface where someone can just have a conversation saying that this is the problem that I'm facing, this is how I need a solution and the system automatically gives the response, it delivers a natural way of, of connecting with, with the professional. Ruben Fuken, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you, Michael. How are you? I am doing excellent. And I'm, I'm excited to dive in with you all about limitless learning and knowledge, all about good gist, your own, your own journey, um, the world of creator economy, content, generative AI when it comes to team learning and research and, and everything in between. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive straight in because we just have 20 short minutes. Uh, and so... Ruben, walk me through a little bit on your journey and all, all the way leading up to to Good Chest. Yeah, first, uh, Michael, thanks for having me uh, on your show. Uh, I mean, it's great to be here. Uh, so uh, my journey, I have been uh, on the field of AI and machine learning for almost like 20 plus years. Uh, so I graduated as a computer engineer and got the opportunity to work at Yada and uh, had the amazing opportunity to work directly with the co-founder, Five, uh, in doing what we used to call back then data uh, research, which later got known more popularly as data science. Hmm. Uh, and the whole idea is, uh, how do you process the huge amount of data that uh, Yavin generates from all the properties back then to understand how uh, user journey moves from one product to another, right? So got got to learn a lot. And uh, so like they say, it is uh, got also bitten by the seat and battered but and started my first start at a vertical search company called Vixie. And where the idea was that we uh, we learn from user searches across different verticals, whether they're looking for a job or they're looking for application or travel. So that we can recommend very relevant pieces of information to them, right? When, so that the searches are very, very specific to uh, what a particular user may be interested in. Right? So we create their profile. So uh, that is where we start like, using the AI and machine learning to solve some real problems, starting with recommendations back then. Uh, so this uh, company was acquired by the NASPERS of South Africa. And then uh, I, I talked to my second startup, which was an enterprise AI company called Datarnia. And there we were solving the problem of machine data, right? So as a uh, company, so this was like early uh, 2012, wow. where most of the large manufacturers, right, they were starting to deploy sensors across their machineries. Now, they were struggling to figure out how would they use the machine data to make decisions. Right? So, so that is where uh, the RPM came in and said that let us provide a natural language interface by which you can actually have a conversation with machines, right? Identify how the machine's functioning. Are there any anomalies in, in, that are coming up? Right? And based on that, you can actually identify if there is a maintenance that is required in the machine, right? And these are like gas turbines. These are uh, assembly line uh, machines, robotic arms, and things like that. So that also helps the company plan inventory and, and things better. So we got the amazing opportunity to work with almost like most of the large manufacturers, got to learn a lot how uh, organizations uh, perform, especially when new technology gets introduced. And uh, 
So this uh, data OPM was acquired by Progress Software um, in 2017. And uh, when we completed the transi uh, uh, transition, so the common theme across my entire journey has been about using technology to solve some human scale problems, right? So things which cannot be done manually, things uh, where uh, there are existing pain points that uh, that algorithms or, or uh, machine can help solve better. But that also led to the thing is that when you are actually applying technology to solve a business problem, the data which technology keeps evolving, right? And the whole field of AI and machine learning has gone through a massive transition in the past uh, 20 plus years, is that everybody needs to constantly upskill themselves, right? So, I mean, whether we uh, like it or not, everybody is now a lifelong learner, right? So whatever uh, technology skills get obsolete, really, really fast, right? So the the half-life uh, period of uh, technology skill is like 2.5 years, right? So which means that, I mean, people have to keep learning new things really, really fast, right? Now that creates uh, the challenges is that we are all also crunched for time when we have to learn so many new things, right? In a short amount of time, uh, yeah, it, it, we cannot do it like a, traditional learning, right? So we cannot spend like weeks or months learning about new technology and then applying it on the on the job, right? So that became kind of uh, the basis of uh, the gist of what we did is that how can we leverage uh, AI uh, and, and uh, technology to generate very curated content, which is specific to individual needs. Right of, of what someone is working on, what kind of technologies that they need to use or they need to learn about, and what problems are they trying to solve with it, right? And then uh, leverage AI to generate very, very tailor-made content for that individual and give them the ability to have a conversation with the AI, more like a coach, right? Saying that, yeah, this is what I'm working on. This is where I'm struggling. Guide me in a step-by-step -step manner. So that's uh, that's what we do at GoodGist. So uh, that's the the gist of what you do at GoodGist. Eh? That's the but, gist. Uh, and so to tell me a little bit about the, the, the pain point from the customer's angle. So if you're looking at enterprises, if you're looking at the way that employers and, and organizations are looking at upskilling and education and being on top of the learning curve as you're talking about it, what is it actually, how do you, how do you actually define that pain point and how do you then think it through in a, in a, from, from a product perspective in terms of what you're optimizing for? Right. So we solve for two problems. So we our, our, uh, our focus is primarily technology companies or software companies uh, where the, rate at which technology changes and the rate at which uh, teams need to upskill themselves is probably the highest. Um, in the industry, like I said, that technology's uh, skills get obsolete and, and the half-life is only 2.5 years. So uh, there are two problems that we solve. So one is the internal problem is that how do technology teams keep themselves up to date with things which are moving so fast, right? And this cannot be done through the traditional uh, top-down approach of learning and development because uh, if a generic course content is being provided, right? So first is that the time to prepare course content is months, right? And then the, the time, the cost that it takes, right? And the time that it takes to generate that uh, content doesn't really help the organization because maybe by the time the content is ready, a lot of things have changed, right? The content becomes obsolete. And the other challenge with a generic one size fits all uh, content is that doesn't really help people who are on the job and trying to solve the problem. The reason being is that in the technology world, everybody is working with different technology stack, right? 
they have different level of proficiency. So the same content may not be useful for everyone in the same way. Just to give an example, uh, let's say now generative AI is huge, right? So if you look from an organization perspective, uh, engineer who is trying to apply generative AI to build a product has very different requirements of of what they want to understand about generative AI and application. Then let's say someone who is on the infrastructure side and trying to figure out how generative AI fits into their scheme of things, right? Because it becomes more like how do you deploy and manage uh, a generative AI model, right? Or if you look from a business user perspective, so their requirement is very different. It's like, how can generative AI help them grow their business? So you cannot have a one size fit all content. So that's the first pain point that we solve because generative, uh, the general content is more like information, right? It doesn't really translate into knowledge that can be directly applied. So that's the problem that we solve is that when a individual comes onto the platform and say that this is what I want to learn about. This is why I want to learn about, right? And this is how I get to apply that learning, our platform will generate very concise to the, I mean, uh, structured content, which is just relevant for that individual, right? Or, or just relevant for a team. So this helps them move with their uh, job much faster. It helps them learn something why they're working on a problem and, and get done. So this, this gives a dramatic uh, improvement to the productivity of, of employees. The second use is that we solve for is a lot of software companies sell via partners. Right? So they have to constantly keep uh, upskilling their partners to be able to either sell their software or implement it for customers. Right? Now this creates a huge challenge because again, as things move fast and, and that training has to be very tailor-made to the use case that the partner is working on. So again, uh, giving that example, say a generative AI company and who is trying to sell that through partners for multiple domains like finance and healthcare, right? Now a partner who is trying to implement that for the healthcare domain has to take care of the regulations, have to take care of how healthcare system works and, and all of those, right? When they're trying to implement the solution there. Versus someone trying to do for the financial world will have very, very different requirements. So the partner training, the partner onboarding, and the partner enablement also becomes very, very specific in terms of how the knowledge is delivered, right? Now, this cannot be done manually at scale, right? That's the second pain point that we solve is that we help companies enable partners in an autonomous way, right? Where the AI will generate very specific content for the partner in terms of um, training them how to apply the software for a particular customer, right? So A, this makes the partner more effective. It makes the partner deliver proper solution to the customer. So the customer is happy. So the company gets to generate more revenue and the company doesn't need to invest in a large partner support team because the partner is almost self-sufficient, right? And and they need to, the support team needs to come in when the partner is not able to resolve the problem through the AI itself, right? So those are the two use cases that we go for. And, and what have you learned about the, I guess, the the consumer behavior in terms of engaging with with this type of work? So as you're looking at, all the way downstream to the actual person who is gaining the knowledge and going through the experience from a product perspective, uh, I think a big, a big interesting question is how do how do we how do we create these products that leverage generative AI um, in a way that in, that are not just engaging but are actually useful um, to on the on the actual customer experience. So those that are gaining the skills. So what what have you what are some interesting insights that you've had there about the user experience? from your product? Yeah, so I think the most important thing is to start with 
the problem uh, that the end user has and how they actually solve or try to solve that problem in their current workflow, right? Because the entire user experience has to be tailor-made or, or has to fit into that workflow, right? So we cannot ask the user, I mean, for example, if a lot of work is being done on the on the web on on the desktop station right you cannot ask the give a mobile app to the users and say that hey do it on on your phone right it's not going to work so a lot of that user experience is determined by how the individuals work today right? so uh, that's the first part that we uh, try to look at is that how can we make it as frictionless as possible by doing integrations into existing systems or giving them something that they are already familiar with, right? So that there is no significant learning curve here. The other big advantage with uh, with uh, generative AI and, and with the coming of chat GPT is that things have become conversational, right? So which is always an easy thing because that dramatically cuts down the learning curve, right? So if you can give an interface where someone can just have a conversation saying that this is the problem that I'm facing. This is how I need a solution and the system automatically gives the response. It delivers a natural way of, of connecting with, with the professional, right? So, so that's the second piece of it. So tell me a little bit about where, where you're at today. So good just is up and running the world. Where were you at in terms of, of customers, in terms of your engagement? Where, when, and, and, and following that, a little bit about the vision of, of where you see this heading, where, where do you see this market evolving to, and, and, and what is the big potential that you see for Goodgist? Yeah. So uh, we started this company um, last year, it was in the, in the last quarter of the year. We did a alpha launch of the product in January. Right, and and we recently did a beta launch of the product. We have been working with uh, almost like twenty plus different uh, companies, uh, trying to understand their requirements, trying to see how they, and and this spans across multiple use cases. Right, these are uh, small organizations, large organizations using it for internal. Uh, training needs or using it for uh, their uh, partner or customer requirements, right? So this is this has given us a spectrum of uh, understanding of how different organizations work, what are the different uh, use cases when it comes to general knowledge management or learning uh, across. Uh, so... Uh, in, in terms of the vision where we see the industry going, because I think there is a fundamental shift that is happening in the industry when it comes to learning and knowledge management from a more top-down driven approach to a more bottom-up. It's about empowering individuals because when you really look at learning, right? So learning is very personal. Every individual has a different level of proficiency. They have different goals. Uh, they have different uh, objectives, work objectives that they're trying to learn for. And they have different work schedules where learning has to fit into, right? So the top-down approach, which which the traditional um, learning industry, which is already a $300 plus billion dollar industry, right? Has been catering to was more of a top-down. And, and of course, it was because it's a human scale a uh, limitation issue because you cannot create tailor-made content for individuals, right, on a manual way, right? So you cannot create like thousand uh, different versions of the course, right, manually. But that is where that AI skill, AI can deliver that kind of a scale, right? So it actually enables us to now deliver truly personalized learning. Right on on deep basis, so that opens up the opportunity in a in a massive way. It's it's very disruptive uh, for the industry, and um, and we see ourselves as one of the initial players in, in in that space. Although we are focusing on 
specific niche at that point, but the technology that we have built enables us to cater to pretty much any uh, learning needs, right, across across organizations. So that is what makes us more excited that we are able to deliver very, very specific uh, learning needs, right? So which is to the point, fits into the daily schedule of, of uh, individuals. And it's more like on demand, right? So you, you just have a conversation, you get whatever you need to do to uh, get the work done. So the, the productivity gain that we have seen across uh, our early pilots that we have done, right, has been phenomenal, right? Because uh, earlier what people used to do is that they would go through the traditional online uh, courses and then what that would do is that help them identify what to need, what are the pieces of information that they need to search for when they are going to apply it on the job, right? So someone would go to an online learning and look up, say, a generative AI course, they get the very broad idea. Now when they have to apply it on the job, so they would do a web search, right? They would dynamically try to recall some of those information or see what fits into the exact requirement, right? That takes a lot of time because, uh, and, the, and the industry stats is that almost like 30% of uh, individuals' day goes into just searching for information, right? And that's a huge productivity loss. And when you see that that knowledge is also not captured, right? Someone does that web search, gets that information, it's all in their head, they solve a particular problem that day at work, now if they have to recall that information, let's say one month down the line, unless they have, they have recorded it, they'll have to repeat the whole process, right? So these are some of the big change. Uh, I mean, these are pain that uh, businesses have been enduring, saying that, yeah, these are not solvable pain, but now with AI, we are able to solve that. We're able to deliver the productivity again, and which is what makes it exciting. Ruben, thank you so much for joining me. This is awesome. Uh, best of luck with Goodgest and everything that you're doing. Uh, I'm excited about where learning is going in the world and personalized learning, on demand, real time, up to date, all of those aspects. So thank you again for taking this time to share with me and Ben, best of luck with Goodgest. Thank you, Michael. And thanks for having me again.